Um, then if you want to sketch with, there is a um, template and all the reference photos in, is all available in a PDF on my website. The link is below. Uh, you do need to be a patron. But it is there, so just go and take a look. Other than that, just in relax and enjoy the class. If you're not a patron, then all you can do is just uh, just sketch out the, the rough outlines and work with. Remember, it's not necessarily always being about perfect in the class. It's all about learning the techniques. Hi, Ando, Morena, Lina, Catherine. Great to see you guys today. Alrighty, so I think let's get going. We're on our few few minutes over. Hopefully, not too many people ended up at the at the at the Venice Canal class. <laughs> All right, let's do an official welcome. There we can get going. Hello and welcome to the drawing ear class today. It's going to be an interesting class. I've chosen quite a quite a nice textured ear for us to draw. Lots of fine um, shadings that we're going to have to do. So it is a intermediate slash advanced class. So if you're new at at um, portrait drawing, I suggest you hop onto my website. The link is below. You can uh, get yourself a access there to the the to the beginners. Um, a portrait course and there we draw the ear just a, a, a very basic ear and for the same reason in that they I, I do all the whole um, the anatomy of the ear and all that kind of stuff so I'm going to assume you know that today so let's go ahead and I'll show you what the what the picture looks like Alrighty, so those of you in the live class, just bear with me. The, uh, I've got multiple cameras here in the studio. So every now and again, I will need to just readjust them. And that does take a few seconds. So just be patient as I do that. Alrighty, so I found this picture on Pixabay of this gentleman. I, I thought it was a great, it's a great picture. And it would make a really great drawing. So I went ahead and I, I converted him to to black and white, to grayscale. Because that makes it now easier to reference all your different different tonal values. So you can see here we've got lots of, it's, it's quite an even tone across. Hey, a um, little bit between here and here because the sun is now coming from the front. And then because he's wearing a hat, we've got some really nice strong shadows to, to deal with which is also something new that we haven't done in, in previous classes in this series. So I'm quite looking forward to that. But now because this is all in shadow, can you notice that here over the ear, we haven't got those huge contrast differences. There's this really fine uh, tonal value changes that we're going to have to draw today. So it's going to be interesting. So I think... We won't do the whole whole drawing, but I, I've given you the whole drawing in your template and everything, so that you can you can do this half as well if you want to. So in today's class, we'll essentially just do that because we we're here to to draw the ear, right? <laughs> and then you can tackle the rest on your own afterwards. Then you'll have a nice complete drawing to 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 work. To, to show with or to put up afterwards. So that's essentially what I'm going to what I'm going to draw when I do something like this. So it's just your your major outlines. They the here by the tragus and the anti tragus the earlobe and so on. 
and then because there's nice um nice wrinkles i've given myself an idea of where they go as well so that's what i've got over there so i'll put that down over there and let's go to this camera here so now just bear with me i just want to adjust my other my other camera to to show just that that we've got a, a wide view at all times Alrighty, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my sheet of paper that I've taken a 9B graphite and I've scratched over it. And that way I've got some loose graphite lying on this piece of paper over here. I'm going to take a piece of t-shirting material and I'm going to now pick up some of that graphite that's on here. Because you can see we've got an overall total value over everything. So we'll use the cloth to quickly lay down that, that initial little tonal value. So I don't press hard when I'm using the cloth. Just a gentle pressure. And what this does is it now allows me to quickly establish the, the overall tonal value. And it also allows me to erase stuff. So as you do this, just be careful your initial outlines that you don't that you don't go and lose them in the process. If they do start disappearing on you, then just grab your 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 eraser and just outline them again, and that will um, establish them. Even if it is a dark outline, it doesn't matter. Because this is now in shadow, I'm, I'm laying down quite a bit of tonal value. That'll get us quite a way away down the track and save us a lot of time getting these tonal values right. So let's do, I'll just put a neat piece of paper next to it and you can get a good feel for how much tonal value I have put down there. Alrighty, so that should get us going. Now we've got here, can you see that because the light is coming quite strongly from the right to the left, his ear is casting a shadow over there. So I'm going to now just add extra graphite onto this piece of paper. But obviously I'm not, I can't do it on my drawing, otherwise I'll, I'll scratch it. So I'm just going to do that off to the side. And that now adds just an extra layer of graphite onto that paper again. 
Now I'm going to take my cloth and I'm going to put my finger inside so that I can do finer detail with the tip where as before I was just using the cloth rough like this because it, uh, we we're just doing an overall shading. Now I want to put down this graphite in, in, in more controlled places. So I'll do that and then I'll pick up the graphite. So I can see it's darkest over here. So this tonal value is never going to be as dark as it needs to be, but it's getting me those basic tonal values in the correct places really quickly. So that when I do come back in here with the pencils and I start drawing, then I already know what goes where. I've got those positions established already. And what's nice with working with a class like this, you can essentially erase anything at any time. Right, so let's see, we've got this um, cast shadow runs somewhere along there. So we'll pop that in. So I'm now getting nice and close to the to the line of the ear and I'm actually going slightly over it because I can erase any of this at any time it's not a problem let's see we've got a bit of dark over there it's a little bit darker over here by the time I've done with this stage I should be able to, with a little bit of imagination, visualize what I'm busy doing. Okay, so this little shadow runs along that vicinity there, somewhere like that. So we can add some more tonal value down over here. Now we've started establishing a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight over there. Right, let's see on this earlobe. It's a little bit darker over there. And over here. And then there by the back of his head, here with the hair. It's darker over there too. As his head curls away from the light. So this whole back area here can go nice and dark. Yeah, I think that should that should get us started. Okay, so what I think we should do is let's start getting some really darks in just so that we've got some nice contrasts to work with.
So the darkest is pretty much this inside of the ear here. So let me just put down the, the, the pencil legend so you can see which pencil I'm using. Let's go to there. All right, so you can see each pencil has a different color. So you can reference what pencil I'm using at the top there. So you see it's a black pencil. So that means I'm using an 8B pencil. Now, initially, I'm never going to press hard because here in the beginning, we're not sure where everything is yet. So I'm going to lay tonal value down, but not all the way to black. And that way, I can still move things around if they're not correctly positioned with my initial drawing work. So I can see it's darker here. And then it's also already going lighter to there. So I'll start adding some of that tonal value down there. And over here. There's also that little shadow in that vicinity there. And then this gentleman does have now some glasses on. So I didn't draw that in. I'll just, I'll, we'll just estimate those guys. Come sort of top of the ear. Down and around to there. So that's um piece of the glasses is is black so we can block him in nice and dark as well but without pressing i'm just letting the pencil do the work for me and that comes out something like that and and, and disappears out that direction so that gives us a nice little found line over here. To establish that edge of the ear. So that's cool. That's a bargain. You see, once you've established these tonal values and stuff like this, it's easy to adjust them afterwards. That's why I first spend a while just you can sort of think of this as a as a planning stage. Now I'm going to get this shadow darker because I can see this um, part of the ear over here also needs to go needs to go darker it needs to get a shading over there so in order to to put that shading in we need to get this darker otherwise we're going to lose that line over there i don't want to quite lose that line because this little found line that you get over here lifts up the ear off the face so with some people, you'll find that you have to create quite a strong found line over there. And with other people, you, it's going to be a lot more subtle. So you just have to look out for that. Here you can see it's quite dark in that area over there. So I'll just start darkening that up. It's because of the wrinkles and things, but I don't want to start hassling with wrinkles and stuff yet. Let's just draw it as though it's smooth skin, because we, we're still planning where everything goes. So I'm still only looking really at shadows and shapes. Think of it this way. When you're starting to draw, you, you've got a blank page. So what you're doing is you're getting just an idea of where everything goes. So you can't initially 
rush off and start drawing details because you're not even sure where your your shadows and your shapes are yet can you see how it's going darker over here because of the the cast shadow from the ear so i'm gradually building that up All this here needs to go darker. Once you've got these shapes and stuff in, and you can stand back and say, oh yeah, that looks like an ear. That's the point when you can start adding details. And it's a common mistake I see people make. They, they try and add the details in too quickly. There's an old saying that says you first draw the dog and then you draw the fleas. Here by the hair, I'm just going to use lines in that hair direction just to start establishing some form of Hair directions over there. So I'll only work in that direction there like that. Not going to try and get a hair effect or anything. I think we'll keep this outside edge quite loose so that the detail, we've got the high detail over here, and then it goes really loose and arty out to the to the sides. That's a nice way of sort of fading out or edging off when you when you're doing just a study like this. Alright, so now we can start now that we've got some basics happening over there. Now we can start adding some detail in here. So I think let's go over to a, a harder pencil, otherwise we're going to go too dark too quickly. So let's go to a, an HB pencil, and I think I'll use the, the chisel point. Because this area is quite, quite flat and reasonably even within reason. And let's just start getting some of the basics, the rough shapes in over here. So we can see it's dark in this area over here. And then there's a lighter area there. And then it goes a bit darker over here again. And you can even just use, say, a, a 2H at this, at this stage if you want to. So we've got some shapes happening over there, and here some shadings happening over here. So as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to work from dark to light. By establishing some of your darks first it gives you the contrast that you need to help judge all the other contrasts Because let's, let's face it, when you start drawing, you've got white paper. So anything you put down is going to look darker. So that's why I, I, I try and lay down the base tonal value, because that, that already helps your eye quite a lot. And then the darker value after that. 
like we're doing now. And then after this, we'll come in and we'll lift out some highlights. Then you've got your full range of tonal value in the drawing really quickly. And that makes it easier to judge all these fine little tonal values in between. Let me just try and keep that at, a, at the same level for you. Makes it easier for you to just judge what I'm, what I'm busy with. Then you can just go across like that, hey? And that's also why I like working from a a one-to-one -one reference. It makes it easier to judge your, your positions and stuff. Yeah, it goes a little dark as that ear curls around. And then here we've got a nice strong wrinkle over there which is also going to help us. So I'm just going to add something down there. It's not necessarily the full wrinkle or anything like that. But it's just something. And that start of that helps your eye tell where's the edge of the ear. You see that? That's why I'm putting him in. Great, let's work here. Here we've got this little wavy bit over here. And then out of this shadow, there's also, it's a little bit darker coming out of there. Okay, we can continue this shading over there. Hi, Murray, welcome. Nice to have you in the class today. And can you see that little shadow goes past the what do you call it the arm of the glasses? Okay, so that goes to there. So now let's take our needed eraser. Take this guy and let's start to just plotting out some of these highlights. So I'm just gonna form my needed eraser into just a little sharp point like that. And I'm just going to try and lift out some of these marks that I see in as best of places when I can estimate them. Whether they 100% correct or not, I'm, I'm not sure yet. We may need to drift them a little bit as we go along to get them more accurate. But that's fine. All well, this is still in the in the plotting and planning stage. There's a few marks over there. And there's a few marks out in that direction, but we haven't added any any darks in there yet. Alrighty. So now that we've got just some basics down there. Can you see we can already see it's an ear? You can visualize that ear already. And and that's what you want. Just to get that basic visualization in. 
as quickly as you can once you've got that in now we can go and sit down and start getting some some of the real basics in and some more details in so i think i'm going to darken most of this up over here not quite to the edge just off the edge we'll darken this up so we can see this is super dark over here you want to get this super dark because this is now the inside of the ear and the light can't get in over there why do i go to the edge because you've got rounding remember the skin you've actually got no there's no sharp edges everything is a, a gradual shading because everything is gradually curving all right so we also have some some ear hairs over there and because we're doing a, a realistic drawing we'll add them in so we established that and we're happy with where our glasses are. i think they can possibly go just a little bit skinnier like that so we'll lift that out just to get that a bit more accurate so we're happy with that that we can also now put in nice and dark because we're certain of where it goes I'm pressing hard So over here we do start getting a bit of a, a bit of a reflection in the glasses or in the in the plastic so it's dark on the sides and then it goes slightly lighter towards the center piece over here and that'll start giving us that that reflection going forward so i'll stop with him over there this back piece over here if i look really carefully is also super dark here I mean, over there, there's just a little bit of a, a very low contrast. Little highlight slash reflection happening over there. So I'm going to leave just that slightest little edge over there. Just a little bit of tonal value going on over there. Okay, we're happy with the positioning of the ear so i'm going to darken up that edge over there where the the ear casts a shadow behind it like that and you see how that shadow lifts up the ear can you see that leave that at that this little shadow over here I think we can also establish him so I'm going to do again uh, because this part over here rounds out I'm going to start this shadow just off of that edge over there like that I'll make him dark and then fade him out but it does go a little bit lighter towards this edge he's darkest over here and then he goes lighter around to there 
Hi, honey, welcome. Cool. Now let's go all the way back down to a 2H. Because now we need to start looking a bit more carefully at these shadings that we've got. We do know it's quite dark over here. And yes, the 2H is never going to get us there. But it's going to start giving us an even tonal value. So we're going to start getting that tonal value blocked in over here. And can you see there's a little highlight over there on that edge? So I'm going to take this tonal value and I'm going to get that in that area over there. There's your highlight just below it. I'm going to get everything roughly that tonal value. That way we can lift out that highlight using the eraser. Alright, so here, can you see that this highlight that comes over here, it gradually sort of disappears over here, and then it continues over there. So you've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a lost line over there, where those two tonal values are roughly the same. So I'll just keep working it, working it, working it, until that line there essentially disappears on me. Okay, let's continue down here. Here, where we put this in initially nice and nice and smooth. Now we're going to start bringing out all those little imperfections in that skin over there because it's not smooth. It goes slightly up and goes slightly down, slightly up, slightly down. So we're going to start working in all those little slightly up and slightly down bits. And how do we know it goes slightly up and down? Because you can see different changes in tonal value. It goes lighter and it goes darker. Lighter and darker. So that's what you'll gradually work in there. Start, start getting in those lighter and darker bits. Even over here, there's a nice little highlight there. But I'm going to first cover him up a little bit. That way we can come back in with our needed eraser. And now, where we initially put those guys in just quite, quite rough. Now we're going to work a little bit more accurate. For example, here I can see it goes down and then up again. And then it flattens out. And then it goes slightly up that way. Here we know that little highlight sort of disappears on us. And then he runs down this way over here like this. But it's also not perfectly smooth sort of comes and goes. So I'm going to make this one come and go just by tapping with the eraser. So that is lighter and darker bits. 
and that gives you a bit more of a a natural looking shading over there all right so what i want to do now is just start getting this the skin a little bit smoother so Mehmet's asking how much time do you need to draw this perfectly it can take hours Mehmet. it just depends on how much detail you want to get in all right so let's i'm taking my my uh my blending stump and i'm gonna just start blending some of these skin tones and that'll start softening up the the shading and making it to look a bit more smooth So Mehmet, that's what's nice about this. You can you can decide how much detail you want in there depending on how much time you've got. If you've got lots of time, then you can spend lots of time here and get the last little detail in. If you've just got a little bit of time, then you get the basics right and you leave it. Then you're done. So as I work this, can you see I'm, I'm working in different directions? If you look at the paper under a microscope, it's like little mountains, little humps and bumps. So by working in different directions, you're covering more and more of those little humps and bumps. Whereas if you work in just the one direction, you'll maybe only cover the, the left hand side of the hump and the bump or the right hand side of it. So now we're working in different directions. You're getting th to all sides of those little hills and valleys. All right, let's start getting this guy. Yeah, and then obviously, what I'm saying is, is um, you know, she's a beginner. If you're a beginner, it, it's automatically going to take you longer, and you need to be more patient. Um, as you as you gain more experience, your eye gets more trained to to spot little tonal value changes. So that also allows you to to draw quicker. So I like to just put a few little dabs and dashes here inside those little um, highlights over there. And if you have to lift them out and put them in several times, it's fine. Just by adding these little dabs and dashes in there, it helps to get them, these little highlights, a bit more uneven. And that makes them look more natural. Because I'm tapping with the eraser. Here, I'm working in little darker bits. And, and you're never going over the same place in, exact, in exactly the same way. So some places stay a little bit darker and some places stay a little bit lighter. And that's how you get that uneven and natural looking skin texture. Okay, now we can go to something a little bit darker. Let's say a B pencil. Um, Anneli is asking, do you always work from light to dark in your layers? Um, well, you, you're always starting with light because you've got the white paper, right? So that's why I established the dark first to get that, that 
contrast and that tonal value in. And that allows me to see the, the in-between tonal value values easier. Because my eyes automatically got the dark to reference from. Alright, so can you see, you do have a bit of a lost line over here. On this, between the ear and the and the face behind it. And that's simply because this ear is now curling away and grad eventually is, is also pointing away from the light. So you can't perfectly see where the one ends and the other one starts. But I'm always going to make sure there's a little bit of a contrast here so that if you come close, you can still see it. When you stand back, it will be, it'll appear as though it's not there. Alright, I just want to get something, then I can demonstrate the next concept to you. Hi Chahal, welcome. <laughs> New face. <laughs> and Fonder, Fender. Okay, I've got a bit of just play down here. So what I want to do is just show you something. So I'm going to smooth this out as best I can. So we're going to form ourselves a little ear shape. Because the play dough works exactly the way your skin does. So I'm going to curl this over. So that you can see what happens. So Doggo is saying you mustn't focus on the time it takes to draw. I, and I fully agree with that. Alright. Because in, in the beginning things are going to take you longer. You need to be more patient. And, and, and it may not l look as good as somebody that's maybe been drawing for for 20 years and doesn't matter it's all practice you get better with brush strokes and with with the better you get automatically you start drawing quicker all right so what i've done is i've formed this little ridge of the ear so i want you to see what happens so my light is also coming from the right to the left in, in, in the studio. So our lighting is the same as in the photograph, luckily. So can you see this little edge over here is in highlight? But now look carefully. It goes gradually darker as it curls around to over there. And now look on my hand. Can you see? There's a, a shadow being cast over there. Let's do that. So we've got a, a more even. Can you see? We've got exactly the same situation as what we have on the on the photo. So even here, because this is a continual rounding like that, it's not, that's not a sharp edge over there. Let me pinch it. So that we do have a sharp edge. It's not a sharp edge like that. If it was, can you see how that edge over there is suddenly stops? And you suddenly get the, the next color behind it. Here, where it's a continual shading or a continual smooth um, skin, it's gradually going from light through to dark. It's a quick shading, 
but it's a, a shading nonetheless, where here it's a distinct sharp line. So always all these little edges over here, there you can see it quite nicely, have a quick little shading from the highlight, they go a little bit darker as that skin curls around and underneath. So each of these guys over here need to get a really quick little shading. At some places it's more prominent, some places it's less. Depending on how much it's curling around. If it's just curling around a little bit, so that you can see that the whole uh, amount of skin, then it's continuous. But as that curls around, like to over there, where you've got a piece of skin here that you can't see, then it forms a bit more of a, a hard edge or a sharp line. So it's still got a little bit of a shading as that guy curls around out of view there. But it's a, it's a quicker shading, where like over here, where it's flattening out, and you can see the entire, there's nothing out of view. It's a slower, continuous shading. Hope that made sense. Just a little bit dark for me. I'm going to go to a to an H. Okay, and everything over here is now. Now that we've got more contrast over there, we can see everything over here is already a little bit too light. So we can start darkening up this area over here, and that's going to give us the contrast we need over there to get that area right. So as before, I'm working on the darkest bit on that little um, triangle bit over there. Um, Timmy is asking what's the name of the paper that I'm placing my hand on. This is just standard tracing paper. I, I got a, a little book full of tracing paper sheets at the dollar store. And that's what I rest my hand on. What's nice about it, because it's it's transparent, I, I can, even though I've got my hand on it, I can still see the entire drawing the whole time. Yeah, so all of this here needs to go darker. And that'll allow us to lift out those little highlights and things. So on the face, the ear is, in my opinion, the, the hardest to draw. Because you've got all those little roundings, and there's no sharp edges, everything is continuous shadings, and, and that's what makes it challenging to draw. But if you're constantly looking out for those little roundings and those shadings, then you'll get it right because you're looking for them. Then you'll, because you're looking for them, you'll find them, and you'll be able to draw them in, and you'll be good. You see, like over here, that's a... You haven't got that distance over there, and that's why you have that little bit of a, a last line over there. So we'll just gradually build up these tonal values, slowly but surely.
So you can see we're only an hour in, but look how look how much of an ear have we already established. And we're actually already at little detail stages, which is pretty cool, I think. So there's a little bump over there. And when I see it, I work it in. There's a little line highlight over there, which I hadn't seen before. So now that I've seen it, I work them in. Let's get those highlights for those bumps in over there. Just little taps. Constantly doing little taps, that's all. Not rubbing or anything, because if you rub, it's going to lift out too much. Everything here is quite, quite subtle. And that's why also here, remember I, I said I'm not going to darken all the way to the edge? And that's because we've got this, this rounding over here. Everything is rounding off. Alrighty, so here we've got some some little wrinkles starting to happen around the ear. This little piece of ear always lifts up a little bit. Look really carefully and you'll notice that in front of the ear over here, it's always a little bit darker. It's subtle, but it's always a little bit darker. So look out for that. Look there, the minute I put that in, that whole piece there lifted up. You see that? Um, Doug is asking, should you highlight before, after, or at the same time as you make the shadows? Um, I like to initially just add in the shadows, because you've now put down that base layer, and then you add in the shadows, and then you add a few highlights in. Just the, the basic positions of them. They're not perfect, and they'll probably all move and change, but it gets you started to get that full tonal value established. But now, once you get to this stage over here, now you're going to lay down different contrasts. And gradually, as you're building things up, you're darkening bits up, and then you're lightening the highlights to, to get those full tonal value contrasts in. So you'll be darkening up the darks, Lightening up the lights and then fine tuning your midtones until eventually everything is looking correct. That's why the cloth is so valuable because it gets that that initial tonal value down, that base tonal value down really quickly, which allows you then to lift out highlights at, at a pretty early stage. Instead of sitting with white paper and trying to figure out what goes where. All right, so here again, everything is a shading. I, I know everything is a shading, so I'm looking for changes in tonal value. Where does it go gradually darker? Where does it go gradually lighter? And I'm working those gradual changes in. And here's something that's really great. I promise you, even this gentleman doesn't know where all these little nooks and crannies are in his ear. So all you need to do is get them more or less right. Then you aim for away.
things don't have to be in exactly the correct position. Unless, of course, you want them in exactly the correct position. It comes back down to how much time have you got to spend on the drawing. If you have tons of time and you want to get an exact look, you want to you want it to look just like the photo, well, yeah, then you take your time. And you fiddle and tweak until eventually all these things are at exactly the same place and the tonal values are 100% correct. Otherwise, you get them close. Okay, so again, yeah, look there, I'm, I'm going over those edges to roughen them up. Where we initially lifted out a, a solid line, I'm going ahead and I'm going over that to different places, same as what we did with, with this. You add a few little darker bits in between that highlight. And then you come here, tap 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 to lift that highlight out again and it, it ends up being uneven and it's that little bit of unevenness that gives you that perfect um, skin texture that we're looking for there so Jeff is asking if I learned to draw first and then start painting or did I paint first I did draw first um, the way I started the way I started art in total, um, I, I needed, or I started a video business. I was going to do wedding videos for people. And I needed a logo. And the logo needed to be a, a silver palm tree. So my dad was an artist, Dennis, but he lived quite far away. So I couldn't go to him and ask him to draw it for me. And I didn't know anybody else. I thought, oh, well, what the heck, I'll sit down with a kitchen table and fiddle and see if I can draw my own my own tree. Sadly, I don't have the tree anymore, so I don't know if it was really good or not. But at the time, I thought, wow, this looks pretty darn cool. So I was quite excited. I phoned Dennis and I said to him, hey, you must see this nice palm tree I drew. And he said, well, you're in luck. This weekend, I'm having a, a pencil drawing workshop, a beginner's pencil drawing workshop in my studio. Come around. I'll buy you the pencils and stuff, because I'm still uh, studying at that stage, I'm still pretty broke. And uh, he said, come around, I'll buy you the pencils, and you, you join us in the course. Yeah, I haven't looked back since. Yeah, so Dennis, of course, gave me a, a good a good base to build off. And that, that base is what what I used to create the, the Let's Draw pencil drawing course. I took that exact same course that, that Dennis had developed. And I, I we, we recreated that in, in uh, video format. And then obviously added additional information to, to build on it. And if you do want to follow that Let's Draw course, it's perfect if you're just starting out with a drawing. Thousands of people have done it already and they had incredible results. You can go to paintbasket.com. It's available over there. Just look under the Courses tab. Alright, so in between all the waffling, let me just do some explaining here as well. <laughs> What I'm doing now is just smoothing out the, the, the tonal values to get that nice smooth shadings. And as I do, it's giving me in between those little finer shadings as well because the, the, the blending stump hasn't got any pencil on it, right? It's just moving the pencil that's already there around. So what it's doing is it's essentially picking up, let's say, from here, some of that dark that you got over there, and it's putting it into that mid-tone area. 
around it. And that's great for establishing little, little fine shadings and details in areas like this where there's just small little tonal value changes. Otherwise everything is pretty even. Alright, so what I think we should do now, we've got sort of most of the basics sorted on this. Yeah, there's there's lots of details there already. Um, so it's just sort of fine tuning to do to get everything right. So let's work a little bit on the areas around it and that'll add more detail for us to spot finer details inside the ear. So we'll get some of these little wrinkles and stuff going. So I'm going all the way down to an 8B. Nice soft pencil. But absolutely no pressure whatsoever. And I'm just going to use it to lay in the dark deepest crevice of each of these little wrinkles. And now as with all the details inside the ear, I promise you even the owner doesn't know where all those individual wrinkles are unless they super prominent. So all you need to do is just get them more or less. So I'm estimating them as best I can. And that'll be good enough. Can you see it's not hard? Very, very gentle with the with the pencil. That was quite a quite a deep fold over there. Here behind the ear, there's a little fold over there. Yeah, in the shadows. That's fantastic. That's going to give us the opportunity to to tweak that and get some details even in the shadows. There's a small little bit of a shadow over there, or a small wrinkle over there, sorry, a wrinkle. And now because we've got some of these wrinkles here established, let's see, that one seems to be around there. And it goes up around that way, it's quite a, it's quite a deep one that. That's why I'm putting them in. And then we have a shirt coming out around there somewhere. Something something like that. Okay, so now that you've got those initial guys just plotted out. Now you're going to go ahead and look to see how do they shade. We know they shade. Let's get 
another Play-Doh out here. Then we don't trash the, the ear one that we've shaped. Then we can create ourselves some uh, some wrinkles. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, so that's now just some some smooth skin. Uh, what I'm going to do is just squeeze that together to form to form a wrinkle. Or two. So look what's happening with that wrinkle. Can you see it's still continuous shadings? It's still the it it doesn't suddenly it's not like a, a cut in there. It's just going down and coming back up again. So you've got a continuous shading from this flat skin on the sides gradually curling down into the valley and then it curls back out. So look what happens. You've got a highlight on the opposite side because our sun is coming from the right to the left. So the left hand side of that wrinkle has a valley. Can you see that? So the right hand side is the darker bit. So that's what you're going to do now. You're going to go all the way back to a, a H or a 2H pencil and you're going to start adding that little shadow in on the sun side. The darker each of these guys are, or the deeper they are, the darker you make them. Something very gentle, just adding that little little bit of a shading onto each side. But that's instantly going to start adding those the depth inside the wrinkle. Is this contrast correct? Is the tonal value correct? No, nothing is correct yet. We've gone all the way back to just creating the basics. Like we did in the beginning with the with the ear itself. Each one just a very quick little shading. So can you see, I can still see where that little shadow of mine is running across. Here's this deep one. Because he's deeper. It's a more gradual shading. And a slower shading. Okay, 
Okay, so that's got us started. Let's take our blending stump, start on the inside of that wrinkle. And now all it's doing is just softening up that little blending. And now you can start working it outwards. Alrighty, back to the the kneaded eraser. So by this time, that little tip of yours should be pretty dirty. So just fold him over and form a new one. And now let's look for those highlights, which will be on the left hand side. Of that little valley. So as I put it in, I'm using a little bit of a tapping motion. And as I do, look how those um, uh, crevices or those creases just pop out. Because now you've got total value. Oh, not tonal value, <laughs> you've got contrast there. <laughs> Again, are these are these highlights and stuff that you're lifting out your perfect? No, not yet. But they're establishing the shape, and from there you can fine tune it. For example, here I can see these little smaller wrinkles and inside the wrinkles so i'm starting to work them out as well none of these contrasts are 100 percent yet but you got to start somewhere Yeah, I'm also now just gradually starting to add, lift out more and more highlights on the on the sun part of the skin. Because here our contrasts are now going to be way less, right? Because of the sun. Okay, so here I'm now really starting to spot smaller little creases and stuff that you didn't see before because you had no detail. And you can also start seeing maybe you've, you've estimated something in wrong, like there. I, I estimated that crease in wrong. It may still even be wrong now, but at least he's, he's closer. And, and that's part of that thing of building up your contrasts gradually. That allows you to move stuff around to get it more accurate. So even here, I'm going to lift out that little little highlight that I see there. Even though it's going to come out way too light. I'm 
That's okay. Okay, so now to start getting this skin texture here. I'm going to stick with the kneaded eraser and I'm going to just start tapping and working in, you can think of it as like we did creases and stuff over here. I'm going to just gradually start working in creases like that with the kneaded eraser. So some of them are going to go across the creases and some of them will go in the same direction. And some of them will go, yeah, opposite directions. And some of them will go in the same direction. And that's just starting to establish some of that skin texture. So that things aren't so perfectly smooth. Can you see how you're starting to see a bit of a a bit of a texture in that skin there now? Alrighty, so let's move around. We've done we've started establishing that over there. Let's start establishing this over here. It's a bit dark in this area. For that wrinkle there. So yeah, things are super subtle, so it's more just shadings than actual, that seems to be around there, eh? So when I'm, like, yeah, I have to, I have to judge this little bit of a wrinkle in that guy over there. So I'm not sure where he goes. So what you do is you compare with areas that you've already got. For example, if I move across and I see from there to there, it's inside where that little kink is of, of the earlobe. So I come across there, so that's where that... That's where that guy belongs. That's where he lives, that's his house, that. And as before, remember that even the owner doesn't know where his, his individual wrinkles are unless they're very prominent. So you don't have to get them at perfectly the, the, the right spot. If you're close, that's good enough. That's right, so over here. This, most of that is still a little bit too light. So I'm going to go all the way back to the cloth. Let's lay down a bit more tonal value over here. Look how quick it happens. And above for the glasses as well. I can see it's still too light over there, so we'll do that. There's that little shadow over there. And now we've got hair coming down around this vicinity over here. So what happens with hair is it casts a shadow on the skin underneath. So I'm going to darken all that skin up over there, but being really careful not to press too hard. Because I need to be able to lift those individual hairs out as well. 
maybe we can even use the, the cloth just to get a bit more total value over there Alrighty, so now I'm going to go over to say an HB. We need to get a little bit deeper inside these um, these creases because they're going to add that extra contrast that we need to see smaller tonal values over there. So now as I do this, I want you to notice something. Can you see that inside the value, the inside the valley, these darks are the same. They continue from here all the way into the sun. Those darks don't suddenly become lighter. It's the highlights that become lighter. So as I put that dark in there, gradually going to turn, change his tonal value in the surrounding areas. Until they're more correct. Oh, thank you, Alien. So I'm not using the chisel point to get these little crevices and things shaded in. You could use the, the round point, just the standard tip as well. It'll work. Why I like using the chisel point here is just that I can, I can turn him on his side and get these fine little lines in. And then I turn him 90 degrees and I can do these soft, gentle, flat shadings instantly after that. Here, yeah, that crease sort of splits over there. Like that. And then here, you've got little smaller creases and things in between same as what we lifted out some texture over there you've got texture over here too same over here you've got little it's not a perfectly a perfect line you've got little bits of smaller creases that come out of that so I start working them in okay 
Okay, we can go over to the, the blending stump and just soften all those guys up. Can you see how instantly it, it takes those hard pencil marks and just turns them into shadings? Pretty cool. Pretty cool and super handy. Because that saves you a lot of the the blending work with the actual pencil itself. Okay, let's start getting just some darkers around here too. As you're doing this, now you, you've got a lot of these little wrinkles and things in. And you may find that, like for example over there, those guys are too dark. That's okay, don't worry about it. As long as they're not excessively dark, you'll be able to adjust them. And lighten them up and get them just right later on. Yeah, so like this piece here is actually a little bit complicated. All these little shadings and things. So I'm going to just get it more or less. It'll be good enough. Also, notice that these highlights around here, save that one over there, aren't as bright as those highlights over there. You're not getting as much light on these guys because they aren't pointing as much towards the light as that edge of the ear is. So I'm gradually working those little highlights darker and darker until they're just the right tonal value. Hi, Christine, and very welcome. Okay, so now, now that we've got a good amount of detail established over there, let's continue over here and just fine-tune. Because now you've got everything in place. So now it's all about how much time have you got. So at this stage we, we went from getting the basics in, in an hour, to getting most of the detail in, in another 45 minutes. But from here, this could take ages, depending on how detailed and how accurate you want to work. So I'm just adding more and more tonal values and finer tonal values in.
So now you'll sit down and you'll just take one section at a time. For example, these little highlights over here, they, they, they're still too, too light. So now you'll zoom way in and, and let me do that. So I'm going to pop you down on. Let's just go to that camera there for a second so that I can zoom in on the other one. So I need to re rearrange it, the camera. Okay, so if I take this and then I fold him like that. Maybe even a bit more. That'll work. Okay, so now you're going way in over here because you've got your basics in. So now we need to really fine tune everything. So now you'll take, say, just this little piece over here and compare it with your with your drawing, and you'll look for the finest little details that you can so you, you can see I've gone all the way back to a 2H so the 2H allows me to do small 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 tonal value adjustments can you see there's a tiny little highlight over there or let me move down over here in this area over here it goes a bit darker around like that over here and then there's a little kink over there which is not quite as light as that guy or that guy and now you can come in here and fine-tune all these little tonal values until you get them absolutely identical Like I said, this is what can take you a lot of time now. So this is where you have to decide how how realistic do you want to go. When you need to go find detail, go to your sharp, just your standard point. When you need to do shadings, just general shadings, then you go to your chisel point. So I've got this nice and dark and now here you need that little that little shading to show that the skin is round no sharp edges absolutely nothing There 
there's a tiny little crease over there. There's a little tiny crease over there. And so on. I like to call this stage polishing because <laughs> you you're polishing little pieces of skin and, and until they until they look identical and it's, I think while we zoomed in there let's take take your pen shaped eraser and now let's just get something that's an even tonal value or even color and you, what you want to do is cut off that tip so that is at 45 degrees. So let me get my craft knife. Thank you, Renato. So I'm going to take my craft knife and I'm going to hold the, the knife at 45 degrees. Let me just see where have I cut before, like that. I'll cut at the same angle. Just a nice 45 degree cut like that. So you get a a super sharp point still not there we go now we can see it nice can you see how that sharp that point is over there let's put those guys together so you can now you're going to erase over the same spot every single time you don't have to press hard but you have to go over the same spot every time using that little chisel point Thank you for joining us, Herman. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Enjoy the rest of your day. Eventually, this little chisel point is going to become dirty. So then you can either just um, wipe him off on your, um, like a, your pants, your shirt, or something like that, or just a spare clean cloth that gets rid of the worst. And eventually that little tip becomes blunt. Then you just chop him off a new one. So the... So that he looks uh, nice and sharp again. Right, so essentially what I'm going to do now is just continue adding extra details in. And like I say, you'll continue now until until you've got all the details that you want in. And you've got it looking just the way you want it. Just the way you, you see it on the photograph with just the amount of detail that you want. And you're going to have to do the same for these areas around as well for example let me just show you how to work in the shadow then you know how to do that too so to get that shadow what you're going to do is just work in the the highlights and the midtones gradually darker as, as we saw earlier your shadows themselves continue into the light areas and they look the same it's the actual highlights of the midtones that darken up so 
So because we do still have a few more minutes left, I'm, I'm going to continue and I'm going to do that for you so you can see how I do it. Let's see, where did I put my needed eraser? So there I want to get really fine details in. Now that point, look how, how blunt he is. So I'll just pull the needed eraser, fold him over to get a new point, and then I'll really form this guy into a, a super sharp point like that. To lift out that fine highlight. You can also use your, your pen shaped eraser as well. And now let's say over there, I also said we've got those things that are, are, are too too harsh. Just take the back of your needed eraser, get him nice and blunt and round like this. And now you can even just press him like that to form a really blunt chisel point. You see that? Very blunt chisel point. So you'll be working with that that little leading edge there. And you're just going to gently tap over the length. Of that little wrinkle that you've worked out. And that'll soften him up and make him more subtle. And just like that, he looks natural, eh? See, this little shadow continues over there. So let's just darken up that, that skin. It's a little bit darker over here too. So to get that... Um, that highlight where the where the sun is. It's all about the contrast. So I'm getting those mid tones. Darker. And they're, they're gonna stop over there, but they're not gonna stop in a perfectly hard sharp edge i leave that edge just a little bit soft so in other words it's a it's a quick little shading now you'll also notice that your skin is round each of those little um creases over there remember we did this and then just squeezed it and, and that's what that, that's what happens to those wrinkles, right? So each one of these guys is a rounding like that. So let me see if I can um, form a shadow. Let's do this and see if we can get a, a, a nice crease going there. Yeah, there's a nice one over there. Okay, so now we've got a crease over there, right? So now I'm going to take that crease and I'm going to take a piece of paper and maybe we can cast a shadow over it. Hopefully I'm lucky. Maybe I'll put one of the one of the side lights off. Just bear with me. Let's put that light off and that light off for a second just to try and get some directional light here in the studio.
No, it's not working, unfortunately. But what happens is, as you cast a shadow, that edge of the shadow is soft. It's sort of like a twilight zone. I'm sure you've seen uh, a photo of the Earth. When the, the Earth is like this, and you've got that little twilight zone over here between the sun side and the shadow side. There's a little piece that's not quite dark, is not quite light. The same thing happens with any shadow. It's always got that little bit of a, a little bit of a bit of an edge, and that edge twists and curls to the shape of the object as well. So because that curl, that um, little wrinkle over there is round, that's what you're getting. A little bit of a, a little bit of a rounding. Can you see now how that sunlight is starting to appear? So all these little highlights that you lifted out will gradually become a bit darker and a darker and darker. Because they're not as bright as in the sun area. Yeah, can you see how nicely that gives it like a whole broader wrinkle? So it's, that shadow is curling around to form or to follow the shape of that wrinkle. All these highlights gradually go darker and darker. So this little fold here is lower than those two over there. So he's not getting as much light. So I'm going to turn his highlight down as well. So his highlight isn't as bright as the two next to him. And that will sink him in. Okay, let's just blend out all these guys that we've that we've just added. Really quick, really rough, because that's going to help get us that skin texture.
Yeah, I'm working in just a few of those little extra creases and things inside that. Inside that wrinkle, there's wrinkles inside the wrinkle. And the same happens with all the other ones. There's wrinkles inside the wrinkles. Right, so I think you've got a good a good idea of what to do now. If there's any questions, let me know, and then I'll answer them. Before we before we end off the class, if you have enjoyed the lesson, you can head over to my website. pop the link at the top there, onlineartlessons.com. There I've got hundreds of other lessons which you can follow, which also all draw and paint along. There's uh, oil, acrylic, pencil, watercolor, pastel, pen and ink, tons of different mediums over there. You can go and follow those classes. Becoming a patron is very, very affordable. Then obviously with all the classes you get uh, the reference material and templates, drawing templates and so on. That you can use to, to work along. Right, so here, uh, what I would do over here is I'd gradually start working in some more skin textures like we did in the in the skin texture class so if you haven't seen that class go ahead and and watch that it is here on on youtube and it is on the website as well so what i also do with um on the website if you're a patron i i go ahead and i edit this class so I take out all the little pauses and stuff, and sometimes I, I would add extra bits in if I continue drawing afterwards to get the to get the drawing to a more complete state. So then you'd get to see that on the website as well, which I can't add here because I'm a bit limited for time. And then, of course, I would love it if you do that while you while you're here. Yeah, lots of little skin textures that that need to happen here now. And they just all it is from here on. It's just. A fine tune as much as you want to to decide how how perfect and how realistic how photographic do you want this guy to look um, Christina's asking what pencils that I use for the class um, Christine I generally use those guys over there, 2H and H, HB, B, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B. And then there's one last pencil that I also use, which is for if I really want to go super black, then I, I go for it's a 9XXB. It's a Kimberly pencil, 
which is essentially it's almost like a it's a mixture between a graphite pencil and a charcoal pencil so he gets you black black I, I can do a little piece of it here i don't really want to do it on this drawing because he literally goes black black and i don't really have black black in this drawing but that's what you would use for your very darks let's take a look uh, Lucas I'm glad you enjoyed the class if you uh if you've been drawing along, feel free to, to post your uh, feel free to post your drawing for me so that I can see what it looks like. You can either do that on my uh, let's zoom out a little bit over there and you can see the final image while we're chatting. If you have uh, drawn along, yeah, feel free. Post it on if you're a patron, post it on the website. If you're not you're welcome to go over to, to Facebook and post it on the Facebook page over there. Let's see what's the address for that. Let me quickly go there and I'll post you down the link. So the link for that is is over there. That's facebook.com forward slash art lesson. Love to see the work that you uh, that you do in the class. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oman, Karabo, Lees. Yeah, and then the the link to my website is below there if you want to go and become a patron. I would appreciate the support. It's uh very affordable. Go and take a look. You'll be quite surprised. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Apollo. And Christine. Um, Simone is asking, why do I sharpen my pencils with a knife? Uh, let me get the two pencils, two different sharpened points up here. And then I can show you why I do that. Let's go to let's go to there. Let me just put a piece of paper down here so that it's a, a blank canvas that we're looking at. So there's the two different points I use. So this guy over here, he's great just for for doing fine detail, right? And if you're doing really super, super light little touches like that, then I would use him. This guy over here is great for doing really quick broad shadings. Look how quick I can shade with him. You can't do that with a, with a sharp point. And then I can go do this. And then just by turning the pencil, I can end up doing super fine lines almost because of the chisel point finer than I can do with him because that chisel point stays sharper longer than that guy because as I'm as I'm shading he's sharpening himself up so I can do super fine lines with the chisel point so this guy is just really handy to have and and it allows you to do softer shadings if I, I, I use absolutely no pressure on the pencil, I can get super soft, subtle shadings with this, 
which I can't with this because you have to because it's such a fine point to get that super fine shading what happens is you have to really gently overlap the strokes because this is broader it's easier to overlap the strokes without getting a banding or a stripey kind of effect does that answer your question let's go back to let's go back to there I'm glad you enjoyed the, the lesson I want. Take care. Alrighty, so I'm not seeing any new questions, so let's call it a day. Thank you very much for joining me in the class today. I had awesome fun. Next time we'll do some hair drawing. Um, but next week, next week we're first going to draw... Uh, no, we're going to paint. What are we going to paint? Let's go and take a look and see what is it. Then we go to here. Just bear with me. And I'll show you what we're going to paint. But in the next drawing class, which is in two weeks' time, we'll do the hair. Oh, yes, we're going to do a butterfly and flower. Let me open that guy up. We're going to paint something like that, pretty much the the flower and the butterfly. Not all of that, just one of the flowers and the butterfly. And I think we'll do that one in oil. We haven't painted in oil for a while, so yeah. That should be a lot of fun. So go ahead, join me in, in the class. It'll be good. Let's get rid of that little thing. We don't need him anymore. So from my side, take care. Cheerio, I'll see you next time.